Hi everyone on YouTube, this is Kay, and today I am here to explain uh, basic stuff about what all this writing on these lenses mean. Like, uh, especially I'm referring to Sony lenses in general. Like, you know, take a look at this. It says, can you see this? It says FE4 slash 70 200 macro G O S S I I. And you know, while I do this, I'm pointing out that um, this is being shot on the ZVE 10. And although I think the uh, product showcase feature is pretty cool, I'm starting to notice that. Um, I wish it could have been programmed a little bit better. Maybe it's a setting, but like, I can't just go like this. I gotta literally, like, put it in the lens's face to be able to see this small writing. Um, I don't know, maybe I just need to fiddle around with the settings. Uh, uh, so just for people who don't know, um, I am not a professional DP and all of my videos are very opinionated, so if you could bear with me. Uh, the purpose of the videos are not to just explain, well not to explain the specs and the numbers, because I think there are a lot of other channels that do that. I'm pretty much just here to give you my personal opinion on what I think. And let me get the sound a little better because the, let me turn the AC off. Yeah, I stopped using my, uh, for this one, I stopped using the usual Rode, uh, what was it? The Rode Wireless Go 2. And instead I have a Rode, uh, damn. I'll put in the description somewhere. Uh, the Rode 2 Go, uh, it's like a mini shotgun mic. Uh, if the sound quality is good, I will be really happy. So, to get on to the subject, when it comes to um, Sony lenses, uh, in the beginning, you know, it was confusing for me what all these acronyms mean, and even to this day, uh, sometimes I'll be a little confused. Uh, when it comes to APS-C lenses, Sony APS-C lenses, it's pretty straightforward, but they don't give you that much information. Like this is an APS-C lens and it says 2.8 slash 20. Pretty simple. It opens up to f2.8 and it's a 30 millimeter, 30 millimeter in APS-C lens. Same with this one. It says two point uh, silver two point eight slash oh my god that's so hard to see two point eight slash sixteen it opens up to two point eight it's a sixteen mil but uh, you know you're gonna want a little bit more information and if we go to this bad boy the new. 72 200 macro lens as you see there's a lot of writing here and i myself you know i i know a lot of what it means but i didn't really know like what these stand for so i decided to just do a little bit of research all you got to do is do a google search so uh, it might not even be worth watching this video, but for those of you that are too lazy to Google search, just like I was for years, I never knew. I always knew that the G Master, you know, with the... <clears throat> with the red G logo right here are G Masters, and the black G are regular Gs. I wish I could have shown you a G Master lens, but uh, most of my equipment is out right now, getting ready for a shoot. 
so I just have a limited amount of stuff here to show you. But did you know, because I did not know what G stands for. And I just found out that G stands for gold. Apparently, someone at Sony decided that our best lens should be gold. They're not literally gold, but you know, to stand for the best of the best, they <laughs> said gold and they just uh, decided to uh, imprint a G and G was their best lens. And then, but the problem was, okay, so we've got the G, the gold lenses, but they wanted to make something better. So then what are you gonna do? They came out with the G Master, so technically it's the Gold Master lens. And one thing that I'm kind of confused about is, if it's the Gold Master lens technically, why is it? Why did they make a red logo? Might as well put a gold G on it. But uh, I don't know. That's a subjective decision that they came up with. Um, let me go into the more, oh, uh, I forgot, I, for, I almost forgot. So there's a lot of other letters on it. So FE, uh, you'll see that on a lot of lens, Sony lenses. FE stands for full frame E mount. It's pretty self-explanatory once you know, F, full frame, F for full frame, E for E mount. Uh, the four here, depending on the lens, it might be displayed differently. But the four is the maximum, you know, how big the aperture opens. 70 to 200, that's pretty self-explanatory too. It goes from 70 millimeters to 200 millimeters. Macro. This is kind of subjective because uh, uh, maybe there is a specific decision, uh, like uh, specific criteria. Macro means you can focus in on very close subjects. To give you an example, like um, I love this Viltrox lens. Again, it has a little bit of different nomenclature here. For here, down here it says AF, AF85 slash 1.8 eight and then fe so it's a little um you know backwards but the fe is at the end so it's a full frame e-mount lens the af uh stands for autofocus and then we have 85 slash 1.8 so that's an 85 millimeter opens up to 1.8 and then we've got a 2 here oh just like this one i forgot to mention there's an oss 2 2 means it's the ch the second version so there was an older version of that and they made improvements and now it's the af 88 85 slash 1.82 so i guess if they make improvements we'll have a 3 um also, oh my god, I forgot to research this one. On the Viltrox lens, up here, it says 0.8M, 2.62 feet, an ohm mark, 72. What that means is uh, they were nice enough to tell us what the minimal focus length is because that is one of the things that I don't, I wish this lens could improve on. Uh, the minimum focal length is 0 0.8 meters or in metric terms, 2.6 feet. So like one, two, three, this, you have to be about this far from your subject to get anything in focus or else if you're like right here, it's constantly just gonna be searching for the focus. So that is nice to know. This ohm sign, ohm 72, that 
ohm, this ohm sign is the diameter of the filter ring up here. And let's see. So, sorry, I keep going back and forth. I keep forgetting to mention a lot of things. I hate getting old, getting in forgetful, forgetful. So going back to this one, it says macro, but macro is kind of subjective. Um, I forgot the actual specs on this one, but what this lens, this, this lens is, it's really amazing. You can be at 70 millimeters and I forgot exactly, but let's say this is the subject. I can be like this close at 70 millimeters and still have perfect focus. Or I could be maybe ever about this far at 200, even with a 1.4 teleconverter and still get things in focus to the point where it can kind of act like a microscope. No, sorry, I keep eating. Up here, it's got a switch that says AFMF. That's pretty self-explanatory. Autofocus, manual focus. So if you switch this to manual, regardless of what you choose in the menu, uh, it will be manual focus. It won't even let you choose autofocus. Below that, we have full-time DNF on off and full-time DNF stands for full-time direct manual focus. So what that means is this one's a little bit unique. Um, you'll see it mostly on longer lenses. So if you put full-time DNF on, what it does is you can use the autofocus settings to generally get the focus, but if you really want to dial it in, you can keep it on autofocus and then use the focus wheel to really, really get it perfect. I've never had to use it because uh, I'm not a wildlife photographer or a sports photographer where like that kind of uh, like really, really critical focus is that important. Uh, I got this lens more because I thought it was awesome to have a macro lens at 200 millimeters. And underneath right here, there's another switch. This one is kind of hard to understand unless you read the manual. All it says is infinity. Hold on, what was that? Infinity to three meters. And you can switch it between full and then like this middle which isn't labeled and then to macro so what that does is when you're in autofocus mode let's say you're at two, the full 200 millimeters uh, you don't want your autofocus to be trying to figure out where am I supposed to focus at in the range of 70 to 200, especially if you have like a 2X uh, teleconverter, you're literally telling the lens, hey, the focus could be anywhere between 140 to 400 millimeters. So, and your lens might kind of go into like a confused mode where it's trying to focus on here, 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 and you can tell it's confused. So what this switch is meant for is if you're shooting something far away, you'll put it mostly onto full or the infinity. If you're shooting something really close, you'll put it on macro. That way, 
uh, it limits how the the focal uh, you know it, it limits the focus search to either something close up or far away I guess the middle one is probably for if you're shooting something middle ground which uh, I, I didn't see it on the manual but what is middle ground that's kind of hard to say um, because you might be shooting a mountain that's like miles away or you might be in macro mode shooting like something this close up so with such a big range it's hard to say what constitutes macro I'm just checking to make sure the audio levels are good on this new mic okay they look good um, and then we've got below here OSS that's optical what no not optical image stabilization is OSS is optical optical steady shot <clears throat> so it's got uh, a bunch of lens elements here some apparently are suspended and so if the you know lens moves around I mean if the actual lens itself moves around the glass inside will try to counteract that so that your image stays steady one thing that may need a little bit of an um, explanation is underneath the OSS on off assuming you're keeping it on on there is mode one two three there's one two three so what the different modes are mode one is general image stabilization in general mode two is it will stabilize vertical motion but not horizontal motion that's because let's say you're panning and you want to pan and do a smooth stop here you don't want the optical and i keep saying optical image stabilization optical steady what, what, oh my god, what was it? Optical, optical steady shot. Un misunderstanding your intentions and trying to kind of, you know, you're, you're doing your best to do the smooth stop. The last thing you want is optical steady shot to think it's not supposed to stop there and kind of do its funky thing. Um... And then the question arises, what's mode three? So according to Sony's website, uh, I'll forget it. Um, according to Sony's website, um, three is for when you want to get rid of the high by like what's the right word for this the the high frequency minimal vibrations i'd assume like these like really like jittery smaller vibrations you know i gotta test this out because i would kind of think um if you're in mode one that's the general stabilization I hope it's taking out those mini jitters too as well but uh, so far I've had no problem with this lens um, yeah the Viltrox we already talked about oh I just realized <laughs> there's more to the Viltrox so here it says you know the focal length and stuff here the minimal I just realized right here it says 85 millimeter 1.8 STM EDIF um, should I just check on that right now 
So 85 millimeter f1.8, that's pretty standard. And STM, oh, I didn't know this. STM stands for stepper motor. What? Hmm? According to Google, STM stands for stepper motor, which is a technology produced by Canon to address the issue of lens noise when shooting movies. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a Sony E-mount lens and uh, I'm pretty sure Canon has a tendency to want to proprietize all of their technology. So it makes me wonder how come this Filtrox lens, E-mount lens, has a Canon STM technology on it? And uh, I don't know, I'll look into it. Um, and then it says E-D-I-F. E-D, uh, let me check that too. I don't think it has anything to do with uh, Viagra. Uh, E-D lens. Oh, E-D extra low dispersion glass comparing to anachromatic lenses ed glass reduces chromatic aberration to a remarkable degree okay so um i don't know how true that is to me it sounds like a little bit of marketing jargon to convince you to buy the lens uh but it's not like i've done any scientific uh, test on it. So now I'm thinking, let's kind of go into like the weirder stuff. Um, this here you see is the Laowa 25 millimeter F 2.8 ultra macro 2.5 to 5.0 X. And this is a weird lens. First of all, it looks really weird. Like, you know, wouldn't you think on most lenses, the wider part is the end? It's the other way around. It gets narrower and uh, I think I'll upload, you know, put a, show you a few photos, but this lens is pretty much, a, I consider it more like a microscope than a lens. And the only weird thing here, you got 25 millimeter f2.8. That's pretty understandable. Ultra macro, it's ultra macro. It says 2.5 to 5x. What that means is it's magnification ratio. A lot of um, regular macros per se will have a range of one. Like for example, this one, although it's a macro lens, it's not a real macro lens, some people say, because its magnification ratio is 0 0.75. I've got the extender on it. The 1.4 extender brings it to a, a 1x so i guess in that sense it is now a uh, real macro but this one goes way further and the weirdest thing about this lens you know i'm going a little bit away from nomenclature but there's no focus ring on it you got but you got a zoom lens zoom which actually telescopes two and you've got these markers here to let you know what your magnification ratio is and based on that you're supposed to focus not with a focus ring but how you focus is by moving and walking so it's kind of like this lens doesn't give a damn about 
focusing. It's like this lens tells the user it's your job to move around until it's in focus, which I find um, you know, it comes to this level. It's you know, I just accept it because the results are honestly it's been hard to find a good use case scenario for this lens but it's damn fun to play with and you know look at everyday objects and see oh my god this is how dirty like the iphone charger hole is or you know stuff like that and uh, Another crazy lens would be the Loa Probe 24mm T14. Um, I guess it's not as crazy. Well, it's, it, it looks crazy. Let's see, in terms of nomenclature. Well, first of all, here is his periscope, and that is not normal. This is uh, specifically called the periscope because you know you can use it like a periscope. It's got like shoot up. It's got a ninety degree adapter. Not that it's like one hundred percent waterproof. Periscope, as in your your submarine, and you can and look around. But anyway. But it is waterproof up to here, up to this USB port here, because it's an F14 lens, it needs extra light. There's LEDs embedded in here. So you power it through here. It's got a dimmer and then you can, uh, you know, dim the lights. The rest is pretty standard. It's got, you know, it goes from T14 to 40, 40, 40, wow, you need a lot of light. Um, and because of the nature of the lens, it's got markings on the focus. Of course, it's not an autofocus lens on distance so that you can precisely focus based on how far you are from what you are filming. And I wish I had more lenses to show, but, uh, you know, it's most the same. I think I'll leave it at that, unless there's something I forgot to explain. Okay. So. E. Yeah, that's about it for this one. Um, if anyone knows why G stands for G Master, and despite that, they decided not to make, no, G stands for gold. Despite that, why did they make the logo gold? <laughs> that's my biggest question. So see you guys till next time. Bye.